The Bhagavad Gita is a book of mankind's collected experience of and answers to life's most basic questions. Who I am? From where do I come? What is my purpose and destiny? And most practically, how do I find happiness? These podcasts originate in the lectures of Neil Bhatt, a disciple of Swami Chinmayananda. They are presented here in 20 to 30 minute segments, each covering three of the Gita's 701 verses. Welcome to Gita Wisdom for Daily Living. We had been discussing chapter 4, Gnana Karma Sanyasa Yoga, Yoga of Renunciation of Action in Knowledge. So in this chapter, we had been basically continuing the thought which was started in chapter 3 of performing Karma Yoga and becoming a Sthita Pragna or perfect person. So we have seen in verses 20 to 24 the characteristics of a perfect person. And Bhagavan basically reiterated what we have learned in chapter 2, that he is a person who is without any attachment and without any sense of doership. So he continues to work in this world, but for the purpose of yagna, yagna tat karmano anyatra lokam karma bandhana, he clearly realizes that act he must, there is no other way, as long as you are identified with this body or you are indwelling in this body, you are a living being and there is no other way but to act in this world. But act for the yagna only. So we have seen the same reputation. Bhagavan said that such a person, gata sangasya muktasya, one whose attachment is gone and he is now free. But that does not mean that he stops acting. He continues to act but he performs actions for the yagna alone. And then we have seen the various yagnas. And we the first we have seen the definition of yagna in the verse Brahmarpanam Brahmahavihi Brahmagnao Brahmanahutam. That yagna is basically an activity which is all performed by the same entity. In this world, the actor and acted upon are one and the same, but I see them differently. That vision of duality is the cause for my sorrow. Once I have practiced this karma yoga and then come to the realization that the actor and acted upon are one and the same, that which enables me to act is also enabling everyone else to act in this world and therefore this world of beings, the manifestation of the same entity, that knowledge but once you, when that occurs, then you come to realize that Brahman alone is participating in this yagna. So in the verse 24, we have clearly said that Brahma Arpanam, the offerer is Brahman, the offering is Brahman, in which it is offered, the fire is Brahman, and it is going to none but the Brahman alone. So it's like the same entity is playing all the roles in this world. So the yagna is that activity to cleans my mind to realize that fact. So we have seen about 12 different yagnas are described. So where I am today, to get to the point of that gata-sangasya muktasya, to someone who is completely detached from all attachments and free completely, so there are ways to reach there. There is not one path, there are many paths. And you can follow whichever is more conducive, depending on your own ability and your own means, you can choose a path which is the most conducive for you. So we have started with two main yagnas, the Deva Yagna and the Brahma Yagna. I am performing all my actions through my senses every day. So I can use my day-to-day activities and transform them into either Deva Yagna or a Brahma Yagna. Either I constantly keep in mind that this transaction which is happening between I and the world is nothing but the transaction at the level of Prakriti which my senses are interacting with the corresponding objects in this world. I is seeing the sights and ear is hearing sounds but I the self is not participating 
in that activity. And that's that's one way of Bhagwan said you look at it. Other way to look at it is that I, the ego, have any existence of its own. I exist as a limited being because the supreme being exists. Because he is functioning through me, my identity with this body, mind, intellect is possible and therefore I have no agency. I do not act in this world at all. Bhagavan then clearly mentioned before that even I do not act. I, the supreme being, has no activity. Even though I created these various types of beings and I created them, but know that I didn't create them. So I remain ajaha, I remain unborn, avyayam, without any mutation. So all that is happening is at my mental level. All the activity happening in this world is at my mental level. Because I am a thinking being and I am perceiving things, the world of perception exists. Depending on my ability to perceive, then I will see the world. I will see the world very colorful if my sight is very sensitive. But if I am color blind, the world will become black and white. So, it, depending on the ability of my senses, the impressions of the sense objects I get creates my perception that creates my world. Now, even the physicist I have heard, I think Neil Bohr or someone said, what is real in this quantum mechanics when particle can be place A or place B, which one is real? And he say, let's define what reality is. So, what I perceive is reality. So, Bhagavan said, that's a Brahma Yagna where I start realizing that what is happening in this world, in my life, is basically the transaction of a Prakriti with Prakriti alone. Myself remains untouched. So, there are 12 different Yagnas which we have seen. But see, these are not limited to just this 12. But because of the limitation of the book, limitation of the time, we have just described 12 of them. To demonstrate that there are many paths, depending on your own ability, you can choose a path. If you are a wealthy person and you use wealth to do yagna, then it is dravya yagna. If you just have nothing but you can practice austerities and discipline yourself, then it's say tapo yagna. All these yagnas are there. The goal is to reach the same destination, to dissolve my ego and become one with the Brahman. In other words, identify with the Supreme Self. So the verse 32 says, Evam bahuvida yagna vitata brahmano mukhe. Thus, there are many yagnas are lying at the mouth of Brahman. That's one translation or one meaning of this first line of this verse. Brahmano mukhe. Many yagnas will lead you to enter through the mouth of the Brahman. In a sense, that you will enter into the state of Brahman where you see everything as the same reality. Other simple meaning, and even Bhagavan Sankaracharya uses that definition. There are many yagnas that are described in the Brahmana portion of Vedas. The Vedas are filled with yagnas. So, as we have learned before, the Vedas are divided into four sections. The Mantra, Brahmana, Aranyaka and Upanishads. So, Mantra portion basically describes the glory of nature. All the phenomenal world which we see, the glory of that is Mantra portion. The Brahmana portion describes many yagnas, many rituals to attain things, to elevate your standard of living. In other words, you can go from this state of existence to the highest state of existence. So, in olden days, the goal was to achieve a state of Swargaloga. All these yagnas are described in Brahmana portions. In Vedas, there are many, many yagnas are described, not just one path, but they all lead to the same goal. Same goal is to find that perfect state of existence where there is no sorrow but a complete bliss. Karmajan Viditan Sarva. Know that all yagnas are product of actions. So, we started out with saying, 
Well, the goal is to become completely free, but that does not mean that you can stop acting. No matter what yagna you perform, they all require self-efforts. So self-efforts are very highly stressed in our scriptures. Even though we are blamed for being very passive in our philosophy, karma jan vidhi tan sarvan. No, all yagnas are product of actions. There is no yagna can be performed. Even brahma yagna cannot be performed without any self-effort. No matter what path you take, you have to walk yourself to get to your destination. So Bhagavan said, evam gnatva vimokshishe. Knowing that, you will be liberated. Knowing that all yagnas are just means and not the end. Sometimes in our normal understanding, when we perform any any religious ritual, we think we are done with it because we have done what is supposed to be done. And Bhagavan said, that's not the goal. This, these are just means. Your goal is destination to reach. These are means to reach the destination, but not destination itself. Therefore, say, know that. Once you know that, all I am doing is preparing my mind and intellect to receive the knowledge. The knowledge is the destination. The knowledge of my own self is the destination. These yagnas are the path to travel with my own self-efforts. When I come to that conclusion, the yagnas only give results of the yagna. Anything which is bound by action will be bound by cause and effect relationship. Each yagna will give a different result and then I will be either the enjoyer or sufferer. So when I understand that clearly that yagnas are finite in results, but the knowledge gained through this yagna, by preparing myself through this yagna, will liberate me from my limitations. So Bhagavan made it very clear, the self-efforts are required, but don't make, just making efforts is your final goal. Efforts are just there to reach your destination. So to elaborate that point, that what is the final goal, the Bhagavan said, Sreyan drabe mayat yagnat gnana yagnaha parantapaha. O parantapa, O scorcher of O, Yagna which require material is inferior to Gnani Yagna. In Gnani Yagna we have seen that I'm putting self-efforts to get rid of my ignorance by getting knowledge is Gnani Yagna. So when I learn something, I put my efforts to learn something, I have basically dispelled my ignorance about that aspect of my life and now got the knowledge. Then knowledge frees me from whatever my limitations were before I had the knowledge. Ignorance is the bondage for me right now. If I don't know where to go, what to do, if somebody shows me a path, it will liberate me from that limitations. Bhagavan said, Sreyan dravya mayat yagnat gnani yagna parantapaha. Gnani yagna is better than any other yagna which requires material. Sarva karma akhilam partha gnane parisamapyade. No matter what field you are putting your activities, in the end, all these activities lead you to the knowledge only. No matter what yagna you are performing, out of all the various yagnas described in Vedas and we learnt in Bhagavad Gita, Bhagavan said, know that the end result of all of them, if performed correctly, with the right intention, then you will end up in knowledge. So the gnana is the destination, gnana is the goal, means are all the paths, all the yagnas that we have described before. So how should I get there? I'll figure out myself. And Bhagwan cautions against that, to have your self-evaluation of your own ability to know. The knowledge is something I'm looking for, and I have to travel my own path, but I need a guide. So we do come across people who are very fashionable, so the guru is not necessary. So even J.D. Krishnamurti, who is probably the first guy who said, if you are a guru, then you are doomed. I heard him saying, I hope none of you have guru in this audience. 
because he said, I don't have one. And those people sitting in the audience, they consider J.D. Krishnamurti as their guru. Somebody telling me not to have a guru, he becomes my guru. Because I took his advice to say not. But our common sense tells us that I cannot learn anything unless I am properly instructed how to do that activity. My own example, I always look at it. I used to sing all my life film songs, but I did not know anything about music. So people do come to me and say, can you teach us singing bhajan? I say, I don't, myself don't know what music is. How can I teach you? So when I was doing my youth group album, actually my students became my teacher. They knew music. I only knew how to sing. They will teach me what rhythm is, what scale is. I'm out of scale, out of rhythm, how to stay in rhythm. The students became my teacher to teach me how to sing. So I did need instruction my, my students became my teachers to teach me how to sing. So Bhagavan said here, if you really want to achieve that freedom by gaining this knowledge, rather than you going into 12 different paths, trying to find which one is right for me, this is what you should do. Tad Vidhi, know that, know that, how to achieve that knowledge and free yourself from all your limitations by going to the right teacher. Find the right teacher. Then, pranipatena pariprasnena sevaya. Go to the teacher with the right attitude that you don't know anything. If you go to the teacher and say, I already know everything, I just want to make sure that you confirm that what I know is correct, then obviously I will not get much out of it. But if I go with that humble attitude that I'm here to learn so when I went to my music teacher, I didn't learn much, but at least I made an effort to go to a music teacher in my late 40s. And the first thing he told me, his name is Subhashan Mukherjee, Subhashan said, what I had to do, Neil, is I have to make you unlearn everything that you have learned so far. That is the only way I can teach you what music is. So if you go with that attitude that I really do not know anything, then only teacher can do any good to you. So he said, pranipatena. Pranipatena by offering a prostration. That's just an indication of what type of mental attitude you should have when you go to someone to learn something. So pranipatena, go with that humble attitude. I do not know right now, I, I would like to learn. Pariprasnena, and do not be afraid of asking questions. So as Swamiji says, Vedanta is the only path which emphasizes that without questioning, you will not be able to learn. If you are just out of awe of your teacher, never ask him why it is like that, you will not really learn much. So just listening to lectures sometimes is not the only way I can learn. I have to go and ask my teacher and say, but why do you think this is like that? If I am not understood, if the idea is not clear to me, I should be able to question. In that dialogue, and we have seen in Bhagavad Gita written that way. Time and again Arjun comes and asks questions. But why is that? Well, you said you taught Vivaswan. How can that be? You are now, Vivaswan was before. How can that be possible? He did not take it on the face value. So Bhagavan said, Pari Prasnina. Ask questions. And Sevaya, by serving your teacher. And Swamiji clarifies, serving a teacher does not mean that you have to serve him with you know, food and flowers. But follow the teachings which you learn and practice in your life. That's the seva Bhagavan said. That's the greatest seva you can do your teacher is by practicing what you learn. Upadeksyanti te gnanam. And once you fulfill this commitment as a student, as a seeker, a right teacher will get all excited to find a good good student. And upadeksyan, he will give you that instruction how to reach that stage, how to learn that knowledge which will free you from all your limitation. Te gnanam gnani tattva darshina. Swamiji says here that Bhagavan lays out the qualifications of a teacher also. This teacher also should have these two qualifications. One is gnani. He should know his subject. Nobody can come and learn music from me because I myself do not know anything about it. Even though I may be singing well, at least in a limited way, but I have no knowledge what I am doing. So Bhagavan said, he should be gnani, he should be a Established in his knowledge. He should be thorough about his knowledge 
So he should be Gnani himself. And Tattva Darsina, not only book knowledge, he also should have experienced that knowledge. Once I had that complete conviction, I have knowledge, but I also have an experience, then only I can instruct somebody. Otherwise, you can say, it seems like it. This is what I have heard before. But I myself is not convinced this is true or not. Bhagavan said, that teacher is not going to be very effective. Therefore, Bhagavan said, Upadekshanti Tegna, such a teacher who is a knowledgeable and experienced. Not only his theoretical knowledge, but he also an experimental knowledge. So in any science, obviously just the theoretical knowledge is not good enough. If it is backed by the experimental proofs, then that scientific concept becomes perfect and teachable. So Bhagavan said the teacher also should have these two qualities. One, he should be knowledgeable and also experienced in that knowledge. We'll stop right here. If you find this podcast helpful, please support it by donating any amount by going to the episode's website at neilbutt.podbean.com or at chinmayarichmond.org. Thank you. Om Sarve Bhavantu Sukina Sarve Santu Niramayaha Sarve Bhadrani Pashyantu Ma Kaschit Dukkha Bhag Bhavet Om Shantihi 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 Harihi Om Shri Guru Bhyo Namaha Hari Hiyo